Hello, and in this video, I'm going to take you through a specific intervention that I've been using for a long, long time with my CBT clients. And I'm going to show you how I incorporate using this particular intervention with my positive psychology and coaching clients. This is an intervention that is really good at enabling us to reduce procrastination to stop looking for reassurance when we want to take certain desired actions and to reduce some of the kind of cognitive processes there that get in the way of us taking the type of action that we really want to take. This exercise is what we call imaginal exposure or performance. So imaginal exposure is a quite well established type of psychological intervention that is used in a lot of CBT treatment protocols for certain types of anxiety based disorders. As an example, I typically use imaginal exposure when I'm working with clients who are struggling with what we call generalized anxiety disorder. It forms part of a treatment protocol in which clients who are struggling with generalized anxiety and often find themselves engaged in observable behaviors like avoidance getting reassurance, overcompensating, um, procrastinating, not taking action, you know, requiring a lot of information before they actually start doing the things that they want to do in their lives, and also tend to worry a lot. The marginal exposure is a key ingredient in enabling the individual to really face what the deeper fear is that is contributing to maintenance of their symptoms, basically. Now, it's a really effective treatment because what we would do is we would kind of drill down all the way down to what is that key deep fear that all of this kind of worry, all of this procrastination, all of that reassurance, avoidance, all that kind of stuff is, is really being fueled by. So we can consider how we might also apply that to moving in the direction of the type of things that we want when we are seeking our goals. We can Think a little bit about how we apply that, you know, with the type of things that people are looking for when they reach out for coaching. So we might have certain goals that are related to our careers, our relationships, our finances, our health, all of that kind of stuff. And even though we are quite clear uh, in terms of what it is that we want out of life, we might have really quite clearly defined goals. When it comes down to us taking that action to do what we need to do, Quite often people will report similar things to our generalized anxiety clients, although at a little bit of a, a more subtle level, they will notice that they perhaps procrastinate. They might be kind of overly concerned with what might go wrong if they take action. They might require reassurance. They might avoid. They might be quite skillful, I suppose, in doing lots and lots of other things, which get in the way of moving them in the direction of what it is that they really want. So when we utilize imaginal exposure in the service of peak performance, goal-directed behavior, it can be a really helpful strategy in enabling people to habituate to those deeper fears that all of these procrastination, reassurance, seeking, um, overcompensated behaviors are really kind of designed to, to mitigate. So if you have a look, now this is the script that I typically use for my clients when we are setting them up to do an imaginal exposure piece of work. Um, you see there that it's kind of highlighted as the worst case scenario. Now, when we are working with generalized anxiety, there is an underlying principle which we call intolerance of uncertainty. So when we generate our script in the case of generalized anxiety disorder, we take this worst case scenario up to the point where we are actually exposing them to basically intolerance of uncertainty. Yeah, we're taking them to that point where the kind of really, um, you know, there's uncertainty in their narrative, their script. It might be a little bit different when we apply it to our kind of coaching goals and, and the kind of things that were stopping us from moving in the direction of what we want. There might be clear things there that people are really frightened of, you know, that, that stop them from getting what they want for life. It could be what it feels like to you know, take that plunge in the direction of the job that they want or commit fully to a relationship. You know, there might be deeper fears there around kind of failure, around you know, getting it wrong, about rejection. But we would say, okay, well, let's 
utilize this imaginal exposure strategy. Let's really pin it down as to what this is. And we're going to write out in great detail exactly what that looks like in your mind's eye. So we would go into so much detail, sight, sound, smell, taste, sensation, all of the things there of, of what it really, really does look like for this individual when they think about that worst case scenario. And the reason we go into so much detail with it is because we want part of the brain that gets activated when there is something that we fear or something that we feel anxious about, the, the, the amygdala in the brain. We want them to kind of react to this imaginal exposure script in the same way as they would react if that threat was directly there in front of us. Because we're relying on this process, which we call habituation, to take place for the intervention to be effective. What habituation basically means is that we are exposing ourselves to the feared stimuli. We are tolerating the distress that comes with it. But rather than using our usual strategies of worry, procrastination, avoidance, reassurance, all the compensatory behaviors, we're staying with that fear and we're repeatedly either listening back to it or rereading it and exposing ourselves to that worst case scenario until our distress goes down anyway. And then we do it again. And then we do it again. And what this basically means is that through prolonged, repeated exposure to those worst case scenarios, to those fears, it basically means that we are less likely to use those strategies that are getting in the way of our functioning as a way of dealing with our reality um, and as a way of dealing with our At a physical level, our amygdala are no longer interpreting that imagined threat as a real threat. And it just kind of doesn't react to it. It understands that it is there in the prefrontal cortex. It understands it's imagined. And therefore, we are less likely to use all of those strategies that are currently getting in the way of our function. So I have put a link so that you can actually download my version of the imaginal exposure exercise in this context. Uh, check it out there. If you're interested in using this for coaching, um, then obviously you can contact me at my website, purepositivepsychologycoaching.com. If you want to understand a little bit more about how this can work with, across anxiety disorders, um, then again, you can contact me at my therapy website, which is www.accesscbt.co.uk. Again, please, if you're interested in the type of stuff I'm doing, just subscribe, write a comment below, uh, and look out for more of these videos as we move forward. So thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Bye.